Hello, this is a review from your fourth grade Go Math workbook, chapter 10, lesson 10.4, starting on page 567. Um, this lesson is talking about classifying quadrilaterals. How do we, and classify just means to sort or group. How do we group these different shapes in different ways? And so we're gonna be sorting and classifying quadrilaterals today and mainly just learning the different qualities of each quadrilateral um, of five common quadrilaterals. And then um, I recommend that you go to thinkcentral.com and complete the 10.4 practice if you're in my class that has been assigned. And that will give you more practice on this particular lesson. So a quadrilateral is simply a polygon with four sides and four angles. You can name a quadrilateral by the vertices of its angles. So remember, the vertices is where these things meet. So you have lines here that meet to form angles, which are here in these corners. And so this is a quadrilateral that we would name A, B, C, D, going around the lines. Quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a possible name for the figure shown. Quadrilateral A, C, B, D is not a possible name. You cannot jump through the air to name a quadrilateral. You have to, any shape really, you have to stay on the line. Now, you can name this quadrilateral A, B, C, D or quadrilateral B, C, D, A, or C, D, A, B. You can name it D, C, A, B. You can go any way you want. You just can't skip through the air. You have to stay on the line. Start where you want and end where you want, but don't jump through the air when you're naming a quadrilateral. Now, something new to our shapes here are these little tick marks. These are called tick marks. The tick marks on the line segments, which you see here, show that they have the same length. So this tick mark and this tick mark, these two are a pair, they match. That means this line and this line are the same length. Even if my drawing isn't that good, these two lines are the same. Same for these two. This line and this line, these tick marks are a match. And so that means they're the same length. This line and this line are not the same length, regardless of what it looks like to the eye. Just by you looking at it, they are not the same length. They are a different length. Even if it's just by one little tiny smidge of a measure, of a measure they are a different length. So you have to really focus on these tick marks and understand that that means these two are one length, so let's say four, and these two are another length, let's say three. So this one is four, this one is four, this one is three, this one is three. That's what those tick marks mean. When you have um, a, a diagram like this, a parallelogram or a quadrilateral, lots of different names for these things, if two lines, assume that line segments that appear to be parallel are parallel. If they look really, like see how this line has maybe a little bit of a curve downward, this line looks pretty straight, I meant for them to be parallel. And so you have to assume that line segments that appear to be parallel are in fact parallel. And so you have to make sure that you, you that's what you think. So again, line AD and line BC are parallel and they are the same length. Line BA and line CD are parallel and again, they are the same length. So that is um, the first part of this, <clears throat> this box. The next part, still on page 567, we're tra talking about a trapezoid. These are five different common quadrilaterals. A trapezoid is a shape, a quadrilateral, that has at least one pair of parallel sides. You can see here that these two lines are parallel when these two lines are not. And if two lines appear to be parallel, then you are to assume that they are. Next, they have a parallel, parallelogram and a rhombus, and then they have a rectangle and a square. And here's what I want you to know about these two things. A parallel and a rhombus, parallelogram and a rhombus, 
have a lot of similarities. And then a rectangle and a square have a lot of similarities. But a parallelogram and a rectangle have some similarities. And a rhombus and a square have some similarities. And I want to show those to you now. So the parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of sides of equal length. So you can see that these two lines look to be parallel, and these two lines look to be parallel, and when some, we are to assume that line segments that appear to be parallel are. And then this top line and this bottom line are the same length, and this side line and this side line, line segments actually, are a different length, but they, are the, they, they match each other, they just are different than the top and the bottom. That is a parallelogram. Next, we have a rhombus. Now, a rhombus looks similar to a parallelogram in that it's kind of slanted like that. It has two pairs of parallel lines. Again, the top and bottom, side to side, parallel lines. They never will touch. They'll always go side by side. And then it has four sides of equal length, meaning this one, this one, this one, and this one. They're all equal length. They all have the same, now even though this might not look exactly like it's equal, my drawing, the tick marks tell you that it is. All right, next we have a rectangle. Two pairs of parallel lines again, and then two pairs of sides of equal length. Now, the only difference we have here is that in this rectangle we have four right angles. Whenever you see two lines that meet, that make have a little blue square inside of them or whatever color it might be, that you know means that it's a right angle. Same for the square. We have a square here. Same for the square. It has two pairs of parallel sides. Here you got these two that are parallel and these two that are parallel. And then you have four right angles. I just accidentally erased my little square there, but there was a square there. Four right angles, and when you have those squares, you know that meets a right angle. Now, here's what I want to talk about. I want you to look at the parallelogram and the rectangle, and I want you to understand that there are similarities here. This one has long one, different, you know, two sets of parallel lines, two sets of lines that have the same length. So these two lines have the same for down here. These two lines, and same for down here. A parallelogram is just a rectangle on a little bit of a slant. Same thing for a square. A square, if you just slant that square a little bit, then you'll have a rhombus. And that is how you classify these things. Now, if you turn over to page 568, they're going to talk briefly about naming quadril or yes, naming quadrilaterals. So if we take our trapezoid here, and we name it U, V, W, T. We can name this trapezoid U, T, W, V. U, T, W, V. And we would draw a little trapezoid here. We cannot name this trapezoid T, V, U, W because we're jumping through the air. And we cannot do that. We cannot jump through the air. All right? So, you are going to classify these quadrilaterals on page 568 by whether they have parallel sides or whether they don't. How many parallel sides do they have? How many pairs of parallel sides do they have? You're going to go through all of this, and you can do this here in your workbook. But for my class in particular, I highly recommend you do this on Think Central. On Think Central, you're going to have the option to see an example, do a step-by-step, -step, check your answer. It's going to be a lot easier for you to do that on Think Central, then it is going to be able to do it blindly here in your workbook. Whereas on Think Central, you'll kind of have a heads up about what you have and what works and what your answer, where you're at on your answer. Okay? This has been a video recording of our Chapter 10 workbook, Lesson 10.4 How to Classify and Sort Quadrilaterals.